so your question is on the Sabbath, is it okay or is it a blessing to um, give people food? To help, to help people out. Yeah, right, right. Yep. Will you help your brothers out? All praises. Hey, sister, I'm hoping um, you stick around as well. We're trying to edify our people, let them know who they are according to the Bible. So this word is for you as well as my brother right here. So the question is, is should we go ahead and, and help um, those who may be afflicted by needing food, so on and so forth? And that's kind of what the churches do, right? Don't they do like, uh, they have like food shelves. Um, they have, um, help me out, what's the word? Like pantries, you know, like they give, they give meals and stuff like that. The, uh, Salvation Army, this is what the Bible say when it comes to uh, helping a brother or sister who you may feel is in need. Give me that. Sirach chapter 12 and verse 1. When thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest it. Okay, you hear that? Read that again from the top. When thou, do, when thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest it. Uh, hold that. Give me um, Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. So the Bible says when you're going to do good to somebody, know to whom thou doest it. And this is the reason why, because you understand that we're at the bottom of society because of us rejecting God's laws, right? So he's afflicting us, right? Right. Uh, give me this when you got it, Hosea 5. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. God said he's not dealing with us, and so therefore in our affliction, being at the bottom of society, not having enough money for food, not having enough money to pay your rent, and so on and so forth, right. that's what's going to make us return to God, because he said if we kept his commandments, we'd be at the top. But if we didn't keep his commandments, we'd be at the bottom. Go back to Sirach 12. Right. So therefore, like, you know, again, like, as I mentioned earlier, the, the churches that give the food, the food shelves and so forth, when they give you that food, when the government gives you that free month of rent or whatever the case may be, they're not telling you, by the way, when I give you this, you got to stop um, breaking God's commandments. So therefore, they're allowing you to stay in your sin. Right. If they, if they feed you for the night, you're going to go back out, right back out in the world and continue doing the same sin that you're doing. So that's why the Bible says, no to whom thou doest it. Meaning that I'm not going to give my money and enable this brother to go buy drugs. He say he's homeless on the side of the street, but he, and he say he needs money. But how do I know what he's going to do with it? Right. But if I know it's a godly man, I know that he fears God like I fear God. Therefore, he's not going to break the commandments. Right. And, and hold on real quick, because again, if I give you that money and you don't keep God's commandments, you're not really facing that affliction that we read in Hosea 5, right? right. God said, I'm going to make you poor. I'm going to make you at the bottom of society. But you don't feel none of that if I'm giving you money, giving you food constantly, giving you rides. You don't feel none of the affliction that God's trying to put on you to return back to him. So that's why it says again in Sirach 12, verse 1, read. When thou, when thou will do good. When you want to give somebody food, when you want to help them out, read. Know to whom thou doest it. All right, jump down to verse 4. Verse 4. Give to the godly man uh -huh. and help not a sinner. Do you know what sin is, uh, JJ? According to the Bible, what's the Bible say sin is? Come on, all praises. Give this brother a hand. Yeah, sin is against God's laws. Absolutely. Now, we're going to bring it out because, again, you know that, but we want to let all of our people who are in, in earshot hear the same thing according right. to the Bible. What, what is sin? 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Bring it out. Whosoever committed sin. So any of you Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, or Native Americans who are in the midst of sin, read. Who, whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law so sin is the breaking of god's laws as my soldier read to you earlier in deuteronomy there are punishments for breaking god's laws so therefore you're not helping that brother or sister be properly punished if you go ahead and help that sinner 
Right. Okay. Now, what you want to do though is you want to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, as the scriptures say. Right. So, if a brother's talking about they, they need food, they need help, whatever, you know what I'm saying? You can try to edify them with scriptures. You can let them know again, hey, bro, you know, the reason why I can't help you is because you're in the midst of sin. You got to return back to keeping God's laws, That's so right. on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? You want, you want to be able to help them out that way. And we do, because we all still at the bottom of society. Even though we repent it, we still face these curses until uh, we're delivered. So we do want to help each other out. But again, I don't want to help you out if you're in the midst of sin. My sister right here, come on over here. But, but the way to sin is death. That's right. To God to Ab absolutely. Ab absolutely. And one way or the other, the most high will punish us. I'm going to go ahead and give it to him. Not that I'm going to give it to him, but what I'm doing is my hands are clean. It's the fact that you could be actually born to Proverbs 3 and 5. But then, but then I... You said that you would still help him out? Yeah, I would help him out if... But, however, if... But how, how would you know? Because men lie. Men lie. How would you know that he's going to go do what he says he will? I'm going to say, because God said, give to those who ask him. And if my brother come and ask me of something, I'm going to give him. Because a, a, a righteous man is false sacrifice. Absolutely. And the, and the Bible says, help brother, not a sinner. So you can't. You, you don't want to go against the scriptures. Give me that Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. And th this script these scriptures is what's to set us up. The Most High, just like a father, he's not gonna tell you anything wrong to set you up, you know what I'm saying? But that's the problem with all of us. We stiff-necked, we hard-headed, and we rebellious. If the scriptures say, give unto a godly man and help not a sinner, you gotta, you gotta abide by the scripts. But, 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 but when they say sinner, you're not talking about my brother. When they're talking about a sinner, Ab absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, because we we read as you as you even said, you because you're saying that sinners are people outside of Israel, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. The, if my brother did something to say one of these brothers failed and they can't and they came back up, are they still sinners or are they I got what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Okay, so let me let me just clarify. Right. So when it's talking about help not a sinner, it's talking about somebody who has not repented. Hey, sis, I, um, I hope I ain't, I ain't lose you. I, I still want to help you out. Okay. Okay. So is we, we talking about people who have not yet repented because you're absolutely right. A just man will fall seven times. I'm glad we cleared that up. A just man will fall seven times. So right, if I do fall in the midst of sin, a brother, yeah, I want to help me out. But we talking about people who have not yet come into the truth, a random brother or sister. Because like it said, no to whom thou doest it. So I don't know a brother on the street, you know what I'm saying, who asked me for money, but I do know a brother who may have fallen. So there we, there we go. All, I do, I do. All praises. I, you had me scared, man. The Bible's only given to the Israelites, so only only Israel is, is the ones who was talking about who could, be, who could sin. God bless y'all. Be blessed, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad you was edified. And I pray you repent, brother. Please hit us up. Can I ask you what your name is? Shauna. Okay, now, um, as we out here, you know, you might have heard, we out here trying to show our people that they're Israelites, according to the Bible. Do you uh, agree with that, or do you believe you're a different nationality? Why do you say you believe, Ashana? Why do you say we chosen? Okay, I can, I can say the, God chose everybody. God made everybody, right? I need to, I need to um, know you understand that. What, what makes you believe that we're chosen or that we're uh, Israelites? You said it one more time. How you doing, sister? Okay. Now let me let me ask you this. Would you agree? And I say so-called blacks, Hispanics, just because that's what um, our oppressors call us, right. but the Bible calls us Israelites, so on and so forth. So would you agree that we're living at the bottom of society right now? Now, though, that's how you would know that we're Israelites. What, uh, what are some examples of the show that we're at the bottom of society?
oppression, prejudice, racism, all oh, praise to the most high. Are you familiar with the curses that would be upon Israel? Okay, honest answer. And that's how we know that we're Israelites because we fit these curses. Now you are familiar with uh, Moses, right? Us coming out of Egypt, walking into Jerusalem. Okay, so we're gonna read a little bit about this right here. Um, uh, hold that, give me a 20, is it 27 to one or one and one? I, know, I think it's 27 to one as well. Okay, so just so that way the Bible is speaking and you're not trusting in my own words, all right? Uh, give me 27 and one. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse one. This is Moses as we're coming out of, out of, out of Egypt. And Moses with the elders of Israel. So, uh, Shauna, who was Moses with? Not with the entire world, right? Is speaking. He's speaking with Israel. With Israel. Okay. All right. We want to keep that. How you doing, brother? All right. Come on over here. Come on. Come on over here. You know, you get to the crazy restaurant. The crave, no, but I can tell you I can get to the kingdom. <laughs> I can tell you how to do that by, by repenting. What's your nationality, sir? Me? Yes. Spanish. Um, from Spain. Okay. Um, are you considered like a Cuban? Yeah. Something like that. Okay. All right. Uh, well, do you believe that your, your people live at the bottom of society right now? Okay. Sorry, bro, but I don't got time. I got to get to this place called that, the that's, that's what our people say, man. Hey, Lord's will on that day, you will. Yeah. All right. Um, so we talking, Shana, we talking to Israel, right? So Moses is about to explain to us why we're living today at the bottom of society. Why, as you explained, we're oppressed. Why we face prejudice and racism and so on and so forth, right? right. Actually, uh, read verse 1, 28 verse 1 first. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So Moses is telling Israel, if we will hearken means to listen. Diligently, meaning that we're going to keep his commandments. Read. Uh, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Okay, so did the Most High say that he would put Israel at the bottom? No. What did he say that uh, Israel would be in related to the other nations? Above everybody, right? There's a stipulation. So there's if. God says if we keep his commandments, we would be at the, at the top of society. Right. The stipulation was we had to keep his commandments though, right? Say it again. Yes, absolutely. Which is what I was talking with the other brother about. You know what I'm saying? Sin is the breaking of God's laws. Right. And therefore, he's gonna, Moses is going to warn us that we would be cursed. There's a punishment. There's a flip side. You keep my commandments, you're at the top. You break my commandments, and we're going to do something else to you. All right? Read verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. But, meaning that, so, but, however, read, it shall, it shall happen. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. So remember, Moses is talking to Israel, warning us that if we don't keep God's commandments, his laws, his statutes, Shana, this is what's going to happen. Read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. How you doing, brother? You know who you are according to the Bible? What's your nationality? Your nationality. Puerto Rican? Okay, all praise to the most high. Would you believe you're an Israelite? You know you're Israelite. Why do you say that? Do you know you got to keep God's laws still? So why are you not doing them if you know that? This is why we at the bottom of society. This is, this is what I'm going in with the sister right here. Um, hey, please stick around. I'm, um, we're trying to show our people that the reason why we're at the bottom of society and what we got to do to get out of it. Would you agree that we live at the bottom of society right now? Okay, so Shauna, Moses told Israel, if we didn't keep his commandments, we would be cursed. You remember that? Yeah. So my brother right here, have you been, uh, were you raised in America or did you uh, grow up in Puerto Rico? In, in America? You were born and raised here? Okay, so now Moses said, all these curses should be upon Israel. Read verse 16. Curse shalt thou be in the city. Let me ask you, who lives in the hoods in Puerto Rico? Who lives in the hoods of Puerto Rico? The hoods, the ghettos. Your family, your peoples, let me, the Caucasians don't live there, right? Hey, Shauna, come on over here. Who lives in the hoods up here in North Minneapolis? 
blacks, right? It says, curse shall shall be in the city. Who gets shot down in these cities? Minorities. Minorities, right? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Moses is saying that if we don't keep God's commandments, we will be cursed in the city. Uh, read verse uh, 17. Curse shall be thy basket. Oh, I'm sorry, finish out verse 16. Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shalt thou be in the field. In the field. So weren't we the ones working in the slave plantations? Yep. Uh, weren't we, aren't we down there right now today still picking oranges and bananas, so on and so forth, whatever? This is, brother, because you don't want to, and you know you're Israelite, so you say. Because we don't want to keep God's commandments, you're saying you're comfortable living out these curses. Because these curses only fit a certain group of people. That's why I'm reading these curses, as I asked you earlier, how do you know you're Israel? Because you fit these curses right here. Jump down to verse 32. And again, my brother, again, if you say you know you Israel, because how did it say we would be cursed? How did Moses say we would be cursed? Y'all remember? What did, what did he say? Why would we? We don't keep the commandments, don't keep the commandments right. right? So if you know that you're Israelite and you got to keep the commandments, you're saying you okay with being cursed in the city? Right. You okay with getting shot down and the police officers not serving a day of time in jail, no fines, nothing like that. They go and work it just like they did on the slave plantations. You saying you okay with that? Give me verse 32. This is another curse, Sean, of how you know you're Israelite because this fits your people and nobody else. Read. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. So you sin again. What's your name, brother? What's your name? Yahshua. I ain't got the righteous name too, man. Oh, man. So you saying you okay with your sons and daughters being given unto another people. Shauna, when we were in slavery, who came and took our kids away? White people, right? So-called Caucasians, right? Okay, did we, Puerto Ricans, ever take a nation of people's kids away from them? Okay, it says, and these curses will be upon us forever. We haven't got to there just yet. But today, Child Protective Services, Yashua, who's coming to take your kids if Child Protective Services come to your door? What nation of people? Puerto Ricans. You, you ever know of any Puerto Ricans taking kids away, Child Protective Services? If, if, oh, if you're in Puerto Rico? Okay. Over here, it's Caucasians. And even down there, America influences all other nations. So everything that they even do in other, other countries, they're influenced by here. And if you don't think so, um, look at, what was that? I think it's Venezuela, you know, got them sanctions. So another nation is going to come take your kids then and today. And there's no power. We don't got no military might or no power. How you doing, brother? You got a, a few seconds. We're trying to show our people who they are according to the Bible. So we, we ain't got no power in our hands to, we'll get, to get our kids back. Read verse 41. Verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Our kids will go into slavery, okay? Uh, give me verse 48. Now remember, because these are curses that Moses is saying would happen to Israel for not <laughs> keeping his laws. This is how we know that we're Israelites because we fit these curses. Read. Verse 48. Therefore, shalt thou serve thy enemy. Who do you, uh, what, what, what job do you work for? You mind me asking? You what? I work in one I don't, I can't even. <laughs> Packing, okay. Okay, what, what, uh, what nation of people owns that company? Mexicans? Okay, what, uh, the job you work for, who owns that company? White people, because it says you should serve your enemy. Now, you did say the, the Mexicans, so-called Mexicans, right? But I'm willing to bet you the raw material that they get their resources from comes from the so-called Caucasians. We may own a few restaurants. We may own a few packaging companies and so forth. Record companies, right. Right, because we may be a producer, but who's the one who writes the producer's check? Uh, praises. And you say white, but the Bible says it's your what? Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So we're going to have to serve our enemies. Now, the so-called Caucasians, they can't be serving another nation if they're the ones who, our, oh, who are our oppressors. So therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies for what? Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. You want a job? You want education? Again, we may own a few businesses, but Moses is speaking to Israel as a nation. 
So as a nation, Puerto Ricans who live up here ain't own nothing. Blacks up here ain't own nothing. We may own a few things here and there, but we but we don't we don't we still got to pay taxes, right? If you don't pay your taxes, the so-called Caucasians is coming to, is coming to get your stuff, right? They coming to get you. It, it's it's okay, and, that, and that's the thing. Our people are stiff-necked and rebellious. So some ain't gonna believe, but you can't refute these curses, right? Because again, if if you don't pay your taxes, they don't pay their business licenses or whatever. And they still got to go to another nation to ask permission to be in that building, that's right. right? If they don't do none of that, the nations are gonna come against you. Was that it on that? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Your enemy, the so-called Caucasian, shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until what? Until he have destroyed you. Okay, all right, so let me ask you this. Uh, Yasha, why do you think we out here then? Let me get expert or Ezekiel 18. Show us the truth, what's the truth? Show the truth who we are, right? To show us who we are according to the Bible. Because we, a lot of us don't understand why we at the bottom of society right now. We think that we continue to march, which we've been doing since the beginning, since we got over here. We continue to pray since we can do it since we got over here. Go to our presses and so on and so forth. That's what's gonna get us out of our conditions, but it's not. The reason why we're out here, uh, 18 and three, uh, or 1830. The reason why we're out here is for us to show our people who they are according to the Bible and then to repent. Give me this when you got it. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. So this is the most high sin. That's why we have the bottom of society as we read through those curses. And there's a lot more. I'm just trying to cut it down for the sake of time. But therefore, right. the most high would judge us. The reason why we don't own car companies, we don't own airplane lines, we don't even own television companies, right? Therefore, the most high will judge us, read. O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord, the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Repent. And as we read earlier, you remember that sin means that we're breaking God's laws. And again, you already you say already know this. So you again, you have to say that if you you okay living at the bottom of society because this is the judgment for breaking God's laws. Most I say he would have us at the top of society if we kept them, but now we're at the bottom. So right. this is the main reason why we're out here is to get our people to understand who they are and to repent. Read that again from the top. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn your and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Let me get Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, I believe it is. So Bring it up. what does it mean to repent? Any ideas? I'm, I'm, I'm coming at you hard, man. Now. <laughs> You're supposed to know this stuff. Um, uh, Shauna, any idea what it means to repent? <laughs> Of our, of our sins. Okay, let's see what the Bible says. Right. Turn back to the Most High, right? Because remember, not to, not, go back to sin. not to go back to That's sin. Right. Yes, yes. Because remember, Moses warned us if we committed sin, we will be judged. Right. So in order not to be judged anymore, we, we got to go back to keeping his law. Read that. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. You in the midst of sin right now, brother? I can, I, I can see a couple things on you right now that's that's uh, that's wrong. But it says, so he that covered the sins, meaning you got to know what the sin is first. And if you're covering them, meaning that you're still trying to do them or do them in secret, you should not prosper. Remember, we at the bottom of society right now. Right. Read. But whosoever confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. Oh, praise to the Most High. So you got to know what sin is, you got, and then you got to confess it, say, I didn't know that that was a, that was a law that I wasn't supposed to break, and that right. I'm not going to do it anymore. Give me right. Exodus chapter 20 for me. Uh, we've been bringing this out a lot today. You, your brothers, uh, you know that today's the Sabbath, right? Do you know how to keep it holy? How? Oh. It's a Sabbath. It is a Sabbath, yes. Yeah. Do you know how to keep it holy? Yeah. How? Well, it started yesterday. Sundown. So you know, yeah, you know a little bit. Okay. Okay, all praises. So, as again, as, as uh, we're showing y'all, so we got to, once we understand that we're Israel, we got to repent means we got to go back to keeping this law. So right. that's, what I, that's what I'm going to try to do until um, I step down is to show y'all some of the laws that we're breaking that we have to go back to keeping. Once now I know that it's a law, I have to do it. All right? Give me Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. 
But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.